Return to the moodometer throughout today's show. Now, when she became Prime Minister just over a year ago, Theresa May stood outside Downing Street and pledged to tackle the burning injustices arising from people's race and background. She ordered a government-wide investigation, and we're getting some advanced flavour of what the report contains. The government will publish its race disparity audit in full in a week's time, examining how people of different backgrounds are treated across areas including health, education and the criminal justice system. Theresa May told the BBC this morning that the report will highlight where we need to act, but admitted it will make uncomfortable reading. Initial findings from the review show the unemployment rate among black, Asian and minority ethnic groups, or BAME, is 8% nearly double that of white British groups, although there are nearly half a million more BAME people in work compared to 2015. In fact, employment rates across the country are higher for white people than BAME groups, and two-thirds of white British householders own their own home, compared to two-fifths of any other ethnic group. University education, white, state-educated pupils had the lowest university entry rate in 2016. Now, the Prime Minister has today set out targeted action plans in areas where there are big gaps in employment, including expanding successful mentoring programmes to get people into work, and working with employers to close the employment gap. Well, joining me now is Munira Mirza, a former education and culture advisor to Boris Johnson when he was London mayor. She's been a vocal critic of the review. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Um, you think anti-racism is becoming weaponised across the political spectrum. Is that fair? Well, I think reports like this tend to give an overly negative picture of how ethnic groups are doing in Britain today. And by framing it in terms of race, racial injustice, uh, it's uh, giving a very misleading picture of why there are disparities. And I think fueling resentment and grievance amongst ethnic groups. Why do you think it's fueling resentment and not actually just stating the facts? Well, uh, it's, it's very interesting, the language they're using. Uh, the Prime Minister's talking about burning injustices, uh, being treated differently because of the colour of your skin. But actually, there are many reasons why there are differences between groups and, and, and different outcomes. Uh, if you think about the fact that nearly half of BME uh, groups in Britain are people born abroad, so there are issues about language and qualifications. Most BME people uh, are from working class backgrounds. They live in deprived areas around the country. There are lots of different factors. And to say that this is somehow because of unfair discrimination in the system, or it's because of the colour of their skin, I think is deeply misleading. And in fact, some of the groups uh, are shown to be doing better uh, than average. And, and we've now got this bizarre logic, which means that uh, the government is saying that white groups are now facing racial injustice because ethnic groups are doing so well uh, in, in education, in, in schools and universities. Uh, so it, 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 now, everyone, is, everyone is encouraged to have a grievance in this. Right. I mean, you say they're being encouraged to have a grievance, but are you saying that discrimination doesn't exist along racial lines in the public sector at all? Absolutely not. There is discrimination and there is racism in this country, but I don't think it helps anyone to exaggerate the degree of racism or the degree of discrimination. And uh, some of the disparities that they're picking out, I think, can be explained by many other factors which affect all groups, not just ethnic groups. Uh, you wouldn't say that because right, there are well, far many more men in the prison system than women, that that's a gender injustice or that because there are more uh, professional Asian cricket players than football players, that that's a, a racial injustice. And it's the, I think, absurdity of this kind of logic, uh, which I think is sending a very negative message, particularly to young people, that this society is against them, that they're disadvantaged, there's no point in trying. I think that that can't be good for uh, community cohesion or uh, social harmony. Manira Mirza, thank you very much. If you can, stay with us, because I'm going to be talking to the Justice Secretary now, David Liddington, who is here with me in Manchester. Hopefully you managed to catch some of what Manira Mirza was saying there. What do you say that she, she's accusing you of politicising anti-racism? You're actually fueling grievances that aren't there. No, I think that you, you can't be complacent about these things. I mean, I mean Manira's right in saying that you've got more and more people from British, black and Asian communities who are now achieving, whether that's in business or the professions or 
the arts or politics, and that's great, but you look at those emerging findings from the racial disparity audit, you look at David Lammy's report the other week on the criminal justice system, I, mean, I can't be happy with a situation where you've got a very large number of young British, black and British Asian people saying they don't have confidence in the criminal justice system. This is about how we address issues of social cohesion, a sense of national belonging. Right. She's saying you're actually fueling it, you're actually making it worse, you're making people think there's a grievance when there isn't necessarily. I mean, do you accept there is a cause and effect here? When we talk about the, uh, the justice system, for example, um, and that there are more uh, men probably from uh, black and ethnic minority groups and they are overrepresented in the criminal justice system, is that because of discrimination? Well, one of the things that David Lamb has asked us to do in his, his report, we'll be responding to it in full later this year, but he's asked us to really look at the evidence base right. in more detail for this. And, and yes, so to probe behind the raw statistics to see exactly what cause and effect is. But if you look, for example, not just you know, people who are in prison, look at our prison service. You've got really dedicated professional prison officers in this country, but people from British, black and Asian communities are underrepresented in the prison service. And that's something you know, we need to ask ourselves some questions about and think, well, are we doing enough to encourage good people from those communities to apply to and join the prison service? All right, well, the Prime Minister has talked about burning injustices. It was a powerful line when she talked about it. Where, where's the policy response? Policy response, well, you will find from the Prime Minister next week when we publish the racial disparity audit in full and set out the preliminary government response. But this is something where you aren't going to have a, an instant overnight solution. You talked in your introduction about mentoring, for example. You know, this is in part about going out, talking to people and saying, yes, you can uh, aspire to you know, get a job in prison service, police, you can get on in politics, as most British political parties have been doing to people from those minorities, and that, that is a, a proven way of helping to improve representation for the minorities. All right. Manira Mirza, I, I hope you could hear David Ling. Did you have a response to what he had to say to me just then? Well, uh, take the Lamy review, which I, I wrote about very critically when it, when it came out a few weeks ago. That argued, David Lamy argued that there was a racial bias within the criminal justice system. But all the evidence that he presented in his report showed actually the opposite, that the, the system is actually very fair once you enter into it. There is an issue that there are some ethnic groups, Afro-Caribbean uh, groups, which are more likely to be arrested. Now, there are all sorts of social reasons there, things that we could look at. But to argue that the system itself, that the public service is treating people unfairly because of the colour of their skin, essentially that it's white professionals who are being unfair uh, to, um, uh, to people uh, because of their ethnicity, is, I think, incredibly damaging. It destroys trust in public services. It alienates young people from those ethnic groups. And frankly, it's irresponsible to use statistics like this, to not talk about what's going on behind those statistics more accurately. And I think really a kind of virtue signalling that it must be racism, uh, which really benefits nobody. Right, Manira Mirza, thank you very much for staying around for part of this interview with David Lingleton. Virtue signalling, is that what this is about? No, it's about identifying where there are real grievances. I mean, it's not an invented statistic that comes out of the Lamy report to say, say that a large number of young black and Asian people lack confidence in our criminal justice system. But that's does not it mean something that criminal I justice system is racist? With. Do you think it's institutionally no, racist? No, it doesn't, it doesn't imply that. It means we need to ask ourselves some searching questions about what lies behind those attitudes. It means we've got to get our evidence base right, right. in the way that Lamy has proposed. And we need to ensure that we increase diversity over time in prison service, um, in the judiciary, the senior judges are committed themselves to achieving. Um, and, and that is how we start to see success and how you see people feel that they have a stake in this society, in this nation. Right, and the policy response so far has been some mentoring, um, trying to get the evidence. But when you talk about burning injustices, doesn't it demand a much bigger, more in-depth response than, yes, a few initiatives round the edges to deal with what you are saying are, are genuine grievances? I mean, what do you say to Oliver Letman's suggestion that actually put people's taxes up, get better public services, and then the population at large, including BAME voters, will fare better? I think we all want to see um, public services get better. We want to see greater prosperity in this country, more, more people in one. We've got a very successful rate of 
creating jobs for people from all communities right. in this country, and that's a good thing. But despite that, you're still in a situation where there is underrepresentation in some key parts of the public service and a lack of confidence in some aspects of the public service. Your starting point is actually to have an evidence base, which this audit is identifying, on which you can then come forward with policy uh, uh, ideas. Now, I'm not going to preempt the, the, the PM's uh, sort of thunder on, on this. You know, the, the announcement is going to happen next week. And at that point, you will get a much fuller explanation, not only of what the findings of the racial disparity audit are, but of, of how the government plans to address them. But right. this is not about instant solutions. It is sustained proper policy work based on good evidence over a period of time. All right, let's move on to the subject of Brexit because clearly it is dominating political discourse at the moment.